I mainly grow grain, corn and soybeans, as well as some vegetables meant for processing, peas, beans and canning corn. Stéphane Bissayon owns 350 hectares of farmland in Quebec's southeast region. He's been cultivating these fields for more than 30 years. I examine the plant looking at the color of its leaves. I look at the flowering. So far, this plant is healthy. Living and farming in Canada means experiencing global warming twice as fast than the rest of the world. To boost production, Stéphane is using glyphosate, a common weed killer. He's also betting on genetically modified crops. 80% of the corn and soy produced here this year is GMO. It's not just the heat you have to deal with. We have rains as well. It's full of changes. The population is increasing. There's less space. There's great pressure on urban areas. We have no choice but to have tools that enhance the performance of plants so we can feed people at a reasonable price. But that could soon change with the emergence of new technologies that genetically modify seeds. This is the corn I use in my farm, which is a bit like soy, resistant to glyphosate. And with this one, there's an insecticide against pests in the corn plant. Health Canada considers them faster to produce, more precise and less expensive than traditional GMOs. This small but mighty scientific revolution makes it possible to modify a species without inserting foreign genes. Different varieties within the same species are crossed, corn, wheat or soy, for example. It seems more natural to me, and I believe that with the possibilities that this technology gives us, we will get closer and closer to making the perfect plant. Let's say, for example, corn, which supplies its own nitrogen with other challenges that climate change will bring. This technology will make crops more resistant to droughts, getting the most out of each genome, each plant, and expressing it to its fullest for agriculture. Advertised as less harmful for the environment than traditional GMOs, these new foods will no longer need special authorization to be grown or marketed. I don't know if Quebec seed companies have already started thinking about it. It could come from, say, Western Canada. The soybeans can come from Ontario or Quebec. The agricultural lobby is already on board with the idea, but acknowledges some consumers may be wary. Quebec's grain sector says it's because the federal government removed regulations around the sensitive food sector without taking the time to explain its decision to the public. Independent, neutral scientists evaluate these technologies. Those authorities are there to protect the public. The government must not just look at what the scientific authorities are doing, but must also take the time to make those decisions understood to the public. The government's new rules were issued at the beginning of May. Those involved in organic agriculture are also concerned. We use, for example, insect nets. That way we won't need to use pesticides. Philippe Morissette spent three years working to obtain his organic certification. He says he wonders about the influence seed producers have since the agricultural sector is dominated by a handful of multinationals. These are organic carrot seeds. With the new law, genetically modified products don't need to specify it on their labels. The government only asks companies for transparency when it comes to genetic manipulation. When we say that three big multinationals control 90% of the seeds, well, that also includes organic seeds. We ask ourselves the question, why not have mandatory labeling in the case of genome editing? Why wouldn't there be one in this case? Morissette wants the precautionary principle to be applied. It calls for caution in innovations. He wants long-term studies to be conducted on the effects of GMOs. But this chemistry professor and science commentator believes people can trust new genomic techniques. He says there are enough legal safeguards and information. When I look at a research paper, one of the first things I always look at is the funding, you know, who funded it. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that just because someone with a vested interest funded it, that therefore you can't trust the data. Data is data. At this point, I think we have enough evidence about gene editing 
to pursue it. With every aspect of science, whether it is food additives or medications or cosmetics, the question is always, do the benefits outweigh the risks? Following Canada's move, the European Commission is recommending rules governing genomic techniques are loosened. However, labeling GMO seeds as such would remain an obligation in Europe. Those seeds won't be able to obtain an organic label either.